Once, on a cold winter night, someone stole jewelry from a famous singer's house. The thief didn't manage to run far away because a police car was passing by. The burglar hid the bag with the jewelry in the snow and disappeared into the crowd. Detective Anderson managed to catch two suspects. Look at them and try to guess who robbed the singer. If you dig snow with your bare hands, they will turn red. This man has red fingers and palms. But that woman could dig snow wearing a pair of gloves, so she could be the thief too. But she wouldn't be able to run in such high heels. A university professor enters a lecture hall, where his colleague, an elderly teacher, is giving a lecture on quantum physics. He's drawing formulas on the board, and his students are using their laptops to take notes. The professor knows that one of these students is sleeping. He starts walking around the room, stopping behind each of them in turn. Who is dreaming right now? Almost all the students are writing the formulas down on their laptops. Except for that one. His screen is off. That's because he's fallen asleep. Detective Anderson is chasing a robber dressed in a tuxedo. Suddenly, the criminal runs inside a huge hall. All people there are formally dressed. Help Detective Anderson find the suspect among them. Catch that guy. He's sweating because he's been running. Leo's boss yelled at the guy because he hadn't completed his weekly work plan. Now, Leo has to spend his entire weekend in the office, finishing his work. The boss took Leo's magnetic card so that he couldn't leave the building. Several hours had passed. Leo feels hungry. There's no water or food in the office, but there's a fridge and cooler in the next room, behind the door with a magnetic lock. On Monday, Leo gives his boss the completed report. Somehow, the guy managed to get food and water. How did he do it? Leo just went to the refrigerator and got himself some food. No one said the door with the magnetic lock had been locked. Mike wakes up in the back seat of a racing car. The engine is roaring, the wind is blowing in Mike's face. There's no one at the wheel, and a cliff is straight ahead. Michael's hands are tied. He jumps out of the car without hesitation and lands on the asphalt. Surprisingly, he doesn't get a single scratch. How is this possible? The car isn't moving, just its engine is running. Victoria approaches her house. The light bulb turns on automatically and lights her way to the door. Victoria inserts the key and goes inside. A couple of hours later, the doorbell rings. She looks through the peephole and sees a silhouette of a man wearing a hat. Victoria is afraid to open the door, but not because it's a stranger, but because it's not a human. Why does she think that? The light sensor didn't work, so there's no physical body outside. There's a huge airplane hangar on the edge of the desert. Pilot Tyler steps inside and notices a cat sleeping near the ceiling on one of the beams. Tyler decides to save it. There are no stairs and nothing else that can be used to get there. The only thing Tyler sees is a large puddle of water on the floor. So how did the cat get there? There was a pyramid of ice cubes. The cat climbed to the top of it and reached the ceiling. Then the ice melted and left the puddle. Margaret, Rachel, and Diana are walking down the street, sharing their plans for the weekend. The girls look rich, but only one of them has a lot of money. Who is it? It's Margaret. You can notice the key to a Ferrari in her bag. 
While leaving her house, Sandy takes her sunglasses out of her bag and accidentally breaks them. Now she needs to buy new ones. Sandy calls a taxi and arrives at the street with fashionable boutiques. The best glasses in the city, the sign on the first building claims. The best glasses in the world is written on the second boutique. The inscription on the third store is the coolest. Sandy heads there. What is written on the third store? The best glasses in this street. It's early morning. Sam leaves the house and goes to the lake. The sun hasn't risen yet. The water is crystal clear. Frogs are croaking in the distance. Sam takes several photos of nature and one selfie. He posts the pictures and writes this caption. I've had a great run. There is nothing better than a morning workout, my dear followers. Have a great day. After that, the guy returns home and goes back to bed. He sleeps until lunch and then takes his phone and sees hundreds of comments. <laughs> I wish I had such a run. Dude, why do you deceive us like that? Here it is, a real day of the champion. Obviously, people have found out that Sam didn't run in the morning. But how? He wrote that he had just had a run. But his face isn't red, and he isn't sweaty at all. There are four different countries on one distant continent. Each of these countries has its own emblem with one simple symbol. The same number of people live in each of the countries. Nine ordinary citizens and one monster. One queen, one king, and one prince. Two jesters sometimes drop by these kingdoms. What is this continent? It's a deck of cards. It contains nine regular cards, ace, queen, king, jack, and joker. Once on a cold winter evening, someone broke into a bakery. When the baker came to the building in the morning, he noticed that the lock was broken. He called the police and reported a break-in. Then he went inside and realized that the thief hadn't stolen anything. At that moment, the police arrived. The baker told him that the place hadn't been robbed. But a police officer inspected the room and declared that someone had still broken the law. What happened there? There are almost imperceptible footprints leading to the pantry. The thief must have hidden there to wait for the baker to receive the day's earnings. Mickey has been wandering in a desert for several hours. He's tired, thirsty, hungry, and sleepy. He notices a big house standing on the hot sand. Mickey goes inside and sees a massive block of ice in the center. Someone must have put it there for a reason. Mickey licks the ice, but it doesn't quench his thirst. He decides to wait. It takes a couple of seconds for one drop of water to evaporate in the desert, so the ice should melt soon. The guy leaves the building and goes for a walk. Several hours later, he returns to the house, but nothing has changed. The ice hasn't melted. How is this possible? There are air conditioners on the ceiling. They keep the temperature in the room low and prevent the ice from melting. Florence, Anya, and Margot are walking along the beach, telling one another about the past week. All the girls look wealthy and successful, but several people are taking photos of them. It means that at least one of these girls is a celebrity. But who? It's Anya. Look! That guy is wearing a t-shirt with her face on it. Marcus is leaving a large shopping mall. He pulls his phone out of the pocket and accidentally drops it. Oh no, the screen is cracked. Marcus gets into a taxi and goes to a phone repair service. He sees dozens of shops. Each of them offers its own services. Battery replacement. The best service in the city. 
Let's Fix Your Microphone, and dozens of others, help Marcus choose where to go. Do you see a small store with the We Can Change the Screen Glass sign? This is what Marcus needs. Somewhere at sea, a huge ship is traveling. People on the deck are having fun, speaking, drinking cocktails, eating delicious food, enjoying beautiful seascapes. This is a passenger liner. It doesn't have any secret mission. The passengers are ordinary people with ordinary jobs. They discuss the weather, new theater plays, music, books, and travel destinations. They all seem to be intelligent and educated. The strange thing is that no one takes any photos and posts them on the internet. Okay, the internet may not be working so far from the shore, but why don't they take selfies? Who said this cruise was taking place nowadays? It happened before the era of smartphones and the internet. So Bill had stomach cramps and went to the hospital where he was prescribed some pills. The next morning, he was found unconscious. Police found someone had switched the pills and questioned three suspects. Dr. Johnson, his cardiologist, saw him at 3 in the afternoon and wrote the prescription. John, the hospital cleaner, came to clean the room at 7 a.m., found him, and called the police. Susan, his nurse, brought the pills to him at 8 that morning. Who's lying? Susan, the cleaner, called the police one hour before she claimed to have brought in the pills. Mia got a new cat and brought it into her apartment where she lived with three other people. But all her roommates disliked her new pet. Three months later, she went on a two-day business trip, but when she came back, the cat was gone. She questioned all her roommates. Steve didn't notice the cat was missing. David said he was allergic to cats and couldn't survive a day with one around him. Sean was the one taking care of the cat, and he was shocked he couldn't find it that morning. Who's lying? David. If he was allergic to cats, he wouldn't have lasted with Mia's cat in the same house for several months before. You went to visit an abandoned castle when you got trapped in the basement. There's a small bamboo stick on the table, almost as long as your forearm. In front of you, there are three doors, and you must spend one hour behind one of them to get out of the castle. Which is the safest option? Behind the first door, there's 100 rabid wild rats. Behind the second, there's a box filled with water, and you must keep your head submerged in it. In the third door, there's an infinitely deep pool filled with box jellyfish. The second door. You can use the bamboo stick to breathe. Brian was traveling by train to a nearby city. He placed his watch on the table and was looking for his train ticket when the train went into a dark tunnel. When it came out, Brian's watch was gone. There were only three people in the car. Mary was sleeping the entire time. Christopher was looking for his wallet to grab a cup of coffee. Mike was playing a game on his phone. Who took the watch? It was Mary. When the journey started, she had her sleeves rolled up, and if she were sleeping, she wouldn't put them down. Sarah was walking out of the mall when someone snatched the purse out of her hand and drove off in a red car. The security closed the parking lot and found three people with red cars. Alyssa said she was inside shopping when she got called by security. David said he had only just arrived. Bob said he was about to pay his parking fee and drive off. Who isn't telling the truth? David. He's got a parking ticket on his window. From the sign on the wall, he's been there for more than two hours without paying and got a ticket. 
And he lies about being very allergic to cats. Simon <laughs> broke into the richest house in the neighborhood and took a very expensive diamond. Security guards caught him walking out and searched him for the diamond. They knew he'd taken it, so when they couldn't find anything, they x-rayed him. Still, nothing showed up. Where was Simon carrying the diamond? As soon as the guards caught him, he put it in one of their pockets. After the search was over and they were driving him home, he took it out of their pocket with nobody noticing. A crazy scientist took you into their basement and is planning to keep you there for a year. He's given you the option to choose one of three foods to eat for the year to stay alive. Which one do you choose to save your life? Pasta and bread, rice and beans, steak and broccoli. If you only ate pasta and bread, you'd get scurvy in just 8 months. And steak with broccoli is low in carbs, which will start breaking down your muscle mass to help you stay alive. Your best bet is rice and beans. It's high in all 9 essential amino acids your body needs, and you can germinate some of the raw beans eating their sprouts to get your vitamin C. Aren't you a smart cookie? Freddy is one lucky guy. He works at a chocolate factory as a night guard. Once, he was checking the factory as usual. He noticed that someone had stolen several boxes with exclusive chocolate candies. The next morning, Freddy questioned three suspects. Jason, a pastry cook, said that he'd finished his shift at 7 p.m. and gone home right away. His wife couldn't confirm that he stayed indoors all night. Harry, a delivery guy, said, I don't eat chocolate at all. Even the smell of it gives me a severe rash. And Peter, a cleaner, said, Yesterday, I was cleaning the warehouse. I found one chocolate candy on the floor and ate it. I'm so sorry. Please don't fire me. Who is the thief? Harry. He's standing in a room with a bowl of melted chocolate without any protection. He would have a rash if his allergy was real. Another working day at the chocolate factory. Jason decided to prank Freddy and covered a raw chicken egg with a layer of chocolate. Then he wrapped it and put it among real chocolate eggs on a tray. When Jason brought the chocolate eggs, Freddy spotted the fake one immediately. Can you figure it out? The real chocolate eggs are hollow inside so they were rolling all over the tray when Jason was walking. But the raw egg is heavier, and it didn't move much. Well, Freddy decided to pay Jason back. He dressed up as a ghost to scare him. But suddenly, several real ghosts appeared in the room. Can you figure out which of these ghosts is Freddy? This guy over here. He's the only ghost who is not transparent at all. One evening, the factory was celebrating its anniversary. The management organized a party. All employees participated in a karaoke competition. Most of them all sang incredibly well and received gifts and flowers. But only two of the best singers, Nancy and Betsy, made it to the final. They prepared to face each other in one more round. But suddenly, Betsy fell to the floor, unconscious. Doctors claim that she had been poisoned. But all the participants of the competition had eaten exactly the same food. Besides, the police checked the dishes and they were okay. Can you guess what happened? Someone poisoned Betsy's flowers. Next day, Freddy came to work as usual. He looked around and exclaimed, Eh, wait a minute! Who's brought a cat to the chocolate factory? No pets are allowed here! Can you see any animals? Here it is! The cat got scared and ran away to another room. Freddy followed it. Can you spot the cat now?
It's hiding over there. And again, Freddy failed to catch the cat. It ran out of the building and hid in the garden. Can you help the guy find the cat? Ah, the poor animal is over there. Freddy caught the cat and found a small note attached to its collar. It had contact information. Freddy called the cat owner, but no one answered the phone. So, after work, Freddy took the cat and went to the address mentioned in the note. It was a creepy castle. The door was locked and required a password. Can you help Freddy crack the code using this hint? The password is rainbow. A gloomy old man greeted Freddy inside the castle. Freddy expected that he would thank him for bringing the cat back. But the old man began to laugh evilly and locked all the ways out. Then he said, If you manage to complete three tasks I give you, you will get a million dollars. But if you fail, you'll stay in my castle forever. Here's the first task. Help me find my glasses among all these vegetables. Can you help Freddy? Here they are! The next task from the old man was to cook a potion and do it in the correct order. He gave Freddy this recipe. Can you help the guy? First of all, you gotta put curry. Then go for blueberries to make the potion look greenish. And finally, add tomatoes to make the potion look brown. As for these vegetables, Freddy doesn't need them. And the third task is to find a book in this messy room. Can you see it? It's half hidden inside the sofa. The old man gave Freddy his money, showed him the exit, and disappeared. But when Freddy tried to leave, he realized that the door was locked. It had a combination lock. Freddy found this mysterious note nearby. He has to get this right or he might stay trapped for a long time. What code will open the door? Two, three, six, one. Each number corresponds to the number of circles in the first set of numbers. Now, Freddy was free to go. Gemma is a mermaid. No, really. She lives in the Atlantic Ocean with her family and friends. Can you tell who the youngest sister in the family is just by looking at them? Take a look at the granny mermaid. She has plenty of starfish on her tail. It's a hint. Each star symbolizes one year of life. That means that the second mermaid is the youngest. Her tail is decorated with 15 starfish, which means she's 15. And two other sisters are 18 and 22 years old, respectively. Now one day, Gemma went to a mermaid party. But one of the guests was not a real mermaid. Can you tell who it was? This shark over there is not a mermaid. Gemma's mother, Fiona, owns a cute one-story jewelry store for mermaids. She came to her store early in the morning and found out that the most expensive necklace had been stolen. She called the underwater police. Detective Fisher (laughs) arrived and questioned Fiona. I closed the store at 10 p.m. and went home. The pearl necklace was still right there. Detective Fisher identified three suspects. The owner of the store next door said, I closed my door at 8 p.m. and went home right after that. The guard said, I was on duty last night. Perhaps the thief snuck into the store when I was patrolling another floor. And the cleaning lady said that she'd finish cleaning at 4 p.m. Then she rushed home because her husband was having a birthday party. So, who's lying?
the guard. Fiona's shop is a one-story building. He couldn't be on another floor when the necklace was stolen. There's no other floor. Gemma was swimming with dolphins and reached the surface of the ocean. Suddenly, she noticed two handsome guys, Nick and Rick, and they were both in trouble. Which guy should Gemma say first? Rick. Although this wooden boat is a bit flooded with water, it's still okay, and Nick can scoop the water out. But this inflatable boat is damaged. Rick will soon find himself in the water, and a shark is nearby. Gemma saved both guys and brought them to the shore. Nick grabbed his phone and took her picture without permission. Gemma asked him to delete the photo, because merfolk didn't want people to know about them. Nick said, okay, I'll delete the evidence, but first, you gotta crack my riddle. Salty water everywhere, but not sea in sight. What am I talking about? Can you help Gemma? The correct answer is tears. Rick asked Gemma on a date, and she said yes. She went to a local witch doctor to buy a potion to get human legs for 24 hours. The door to the witch's house was locked, and the note said, If you want to meet me, find the key first. Can you help Gemma find the key? Here it is! Gemma opened the door with the key and found another door that required a password. There was a note on the door. What has 88 keys but cannot open a single door? Can you help Gemma crack the code? It's a piano! Gemma didn't have any money. The witch offered her this deal. If you guess my riddle, I'll give you the potion for free. But if you don't crack it, you will be my servant forever. So listen, two in a hole and four in a pack. Six in a trio, you see. Eight's a quartet, but what you must get is the name that fits just one of me. What am I? Gemma cracked this riddle right away and got her potion. What about you? The correct answer is half. Gemma got the potion, drank it, and turned into a human. There were three routes she could take to get to the meeting point. The first path led through a village inhabited by vampires. The second path is full of toxic flowers that could make her lose her mind. And the third path went through an enchanted forest that blocked all magic and canceled all previous spells. Which uh -oh. way should Gemma choose? The first option is the safest. It's a sunny day and vampires are probably sleeping. Rick and Gemma met at a restaurant called Three Mermaids. But there are only two statues of mermaids on the porch. The owner of the cafe, Victor, is well aware of this and could easily fix this. But he doesn't. Why? This is his business strategy. Passersby notice the mistake, enter the restaurant to inform the owner, and often stay for lunch. Rick is a detective at the police station. During his dinner with Gemma, he received an urgent call from work. Jeff, a country house owner, said that his housekeeper had tried to get rid of him. The night before, the housekeeper gave him an apple for dessert. The man took a bite and passed out. He woke up the next morning and immediately called the police. Rick and Gemma went to the crime scene. The housekeeper denied everything. Gemma didn't know who to believe. But when Rick examined the crime scene, he understood who was lying right away. Who's the liar? The housekeeper or the owner? The owner said he'd eaten a poison apple. So if it happened the day before, this apple must be brown now. 
But it's not. The man must have bitten into it just before calling the police. Gemma didn't notice this clue because she doesn't live on land. Now Bill was walking down the pier, dreaming about buying his own boat one day and going for a trip around the world. Suddenly, he saw a large, fancy boat filled with people. Then he looked again, but this time he didn't see a single person on board. Why? Let me give you a little hint. The boat hasn't sunk. The answer is because all the people on board are married. <laughs> no single. Captain Sam invited Bill to join their party. Bill was very glad and went up to the deck immediately. Captain Sam pointed at three women on the deck and told Bill, Meet my wife, Georgina. Can you tell which of these ladies is his real wife? This lady is wearing clothes similar to the ones the captain has, but that doesn't necessarily mean she's his wife. This woman's wedding ring is unusual and identical to this guy's ring, so she's probably his wife. But this woman over there, with no ring at all, has a heart-shaped tattoo on her arm with Sam's name inside. If you look closely, you'll see a similar heart-shaped tattoo on Sam's arm. Ah. Georgina went up to the guys and asked Bill a tricky question. What two things can you never have for breakfast? Have you guessed? Lunch and dinner, of course. <laughs> they took Bill to the dining room, and he saw two tables with seemingly identical baristas. But there are three differences between them. Have you noticed them already? Here they are! Bill asked Georgina a question about her family. She answered this way, I have as many brothers as sisters, but each brother has only half as many brothers as sisters. How many brothers and sisters are there in the family? Can you guess? There are four sisters and three brothers. One of the baristas brewed delicious coffee for Bill, Georgina, and Sam. Georgina left her cup on the table and went to wash her hands. When she came back, her cup was gone. Who stole Georgina's coffee? This guy. There are lipstick stains on his cup. After dinner, Bill went to the bathroom and noticed a fish tank wall in the hallway. Suddenly, the door slammed shut. To open it, the guy needed a code. How can Bill unlock the door? There's a hint on the door, a yellow fish. Bill should count all the yellow fish in the water and type in this number. That's right, the correct code is 13. <laughs> Bill unlocked the bathroom door and found himself in a weird hall with four doors. There was a TV and a small window there. The window was on the wall near the doors. It was too small to escape through. Suddenly, the TV turned on and informed Bill that he had only one chance to survive. He needed to choose the right door. Three doors were fake, and only one door could lead him to freedom. How can Bill figure out which door is real? He needs to open the window. This will create a draft under the right door. Bill went back to the dining room. The waiter served two trays with delicious sushi. Can you see any differences between them? Here they are. After dinner, Bill felt sick and fainted. He woke up in a creepy castle. Sam's voice said through a loudspeaker, If you manage to solve all my riddles, you'll leave this place with one billion dollars. And if not, you'll stay here forever. First of all, open the door. Bill examined the door. 
it required a passcode. Bill didn't waste time and cracked the code very quickly. Have you guessed what the right combination is? It's 4784. Take a look at the wall. There's a hint. There are four flowers, and each flower has a specific number of petals. Bill found himself in a long, dark hallway. The voice said, Here's the next riddle. Listen attentively. It can't be seen, can't be felt, can't be heard, and can't be smelt. It lies behind stars and under hills, and empty holes it fills. It comes first and follows after. It ends life in laughter. What is it? The correct answer is darkness. As soon as Bill gave his answer, someone turned on the light in the hallway. Bill noticed four doors. It was extremely cold behind the first door. If he chose to go that way, he'd turn into a block of ice in a matter of seconds. There was an evil vampire behind the second door. The room behind the third door was filled with toxic gas that wouldn't let Bill breathe. And the fourth door led to a water tank with hungry sharks. What should Bill choose? He needs to wait till dawn and walk through the second door. Vampires hate sunlight, so Bill would be safe. In the next room, Bill saw a wall covered with this pattern. Can you help him spot the odd image and unlock the passage to the next challenge? Aha! Here it is! Bill entered the next room and fell into a 20-foot deep pool. The pool was empty, but in 5 minutes, it would start filling with water. Bill was terrified because he was a bad swimmer. He looked around and noticed a 6-foot-long rope lying at the bottom of the pool. He also saw a 4-foot-wide wooden barrel and a 3-foot-tall metal safe. Bill was 6 feet tall. Can you help him get out of the pool safely? Bill should hold on to the barrel when the water starts to rise. It'll help him stay afloat and take him to the surface. Bill got out of the pool successfully and entered the next room. He saw this pattern. There's a hidden button among these images. Can you tell where it is? It's over there. Bill found himself in a beautiful garden. He needed to figure out which way led to the exit. Have you already cracked the riddle? Only the fifth path is free of obstacles. The next door had a five-digit combination lock. Bill looked around for some clues. He found a piece of paper with five digits, 81169. But this code was wrong. Bill began to panic. But then he realized why the code didn't work. What about you? Bill was holding the paper upside down. The correct code is 69118. Miss Virginia Dell called the police and reported that her diamond necklace had been stolen from her room. Someone had broken in by smashing the window. A detective came to her house and saw that the window was indeed shattered and the room was a mess. Do you think someone really robbed the lady? Or was the whole thing staged? No one robbed Mrs. Dell. If the window had been broken from the outside, there would be glass on the floor. But the floor is clean, which means the window was broken from the inside, probably by Ms. Dell herself. During summer break, Penny's friends invited her to go camping. Penny didn't like such activities, but she also didn't want to admit that she'd rather stay at home watching TV. So she said that her parents had invited her to go to Greece with them. 
In reality, she stayed at home and binge-watched TV shows. Her family sent her some pictures from their vacation. Penny photoshopped herself into these photos and sent them to her friends. But when they saw the pictures, they realized that Penny wasn't in Greece. How did they figure it out? Penny is wearing the same outfit in every photo. It looks very suspicious. Mrs. Lawrence had three teenage daughters, Bonnie, Cassidy, and Sierra. They were all grounded and couldn't leave the house. Still, a neighbor saw one of the girls in the mall. Mrs. Lawrence came home and asked the girls what they'd been doing. Bonnie said she had been reading all day. Cassidy said that she had been painting in her room. Sierra said she'd spent the day in the garden and had just returned home. Which of the girls was in the mall? Both Cassidy and Sierra have some dirt on their shoes. That's okay for Sierra since she was in the garden. But Cassidy said she hadn't left her room, which means she lied. Yvette always wanted to get a cat, but her mom didn't allow her to have one. Once, the girl found a kitten in the street and brought it home. She knew her mom would make her take it to the shelter, so she decided to hide the animal. Yvette managed to keep it for two weeks without her mom noticing anything. But one morning, Yvette's mom walked into her daughter's room and realized a cat lived there. So how did she figure it out? Yvette is wearing shorts, and her legs are all scratched. Ned works in a club. His job is to check people's ID cards and not to let inside anyone suspicious or people younger than 21. Take a look at these ID cards and help Ned decide who won't get into the party today. So what do you think about this woman here? She seems fine. Let her pass. Now take a look at this guy. What's your verdict? He lives in Wonderland. I've never heard of such a city. Let him go back to Wonderland. No clubbing tonight. What about this girl? What do you think? She seems okay. Here's another one. What would you say about her? What's your verdict? I'd say pass. What about this young lady? The month and date of her birthday seem to be reversed. I'd say something is wrong with her ID. Okay, and how about this one? Yes or no? He's just 17 years old. Definitely a no-no. Okay, how about something a bit harder? Rhett was driving to a neighboring city when one of his car tires went flat. He stopped to change it, but accidentally dropped all the four bolts used to fasten the wheel down the drain. Butter fingers. The guy didn't have any extra bolts to fix the wheel and to drive to the nearest service station. It was also a deserted road. No one traveled there, and Rhett's phone had run out of battery. What can this guy do to fix his car and get to the service station? Well, there's one solution. He can take one bolt from each of the other three wheels and use those three bolts to attach the fourth wheel. It must be enough to reach the place where he can get qualified help. Eve is taking part in a lottery. She has all the winning numbers written on a piece of paper. She can still participate and no one will stop her. But if Neva participates, she will have the same chances of winning as everyone else. Why?
Hebei just wrote down all the possible numbers that might be drawn. She still doesn't know which ones exactly will be chosen, so it doesn't affect her chances. Now, imagine you're a bus driver. This bus driver is driving through a small town. There are seven passengers inside the bus. At the first stop, the driver picks up five more passengers and one person gets off the bus. At the second stop, the driver picks up eight more passengers and nine get off the bus. At the third stop, the rest of the passengers get off the bus. How old is the bus driver? Well, it seems confusing, but the answer is simple. As I said in the beginning, you are the bus driver. So, how old are you? Well, that old? <laughs>